Hi, my name is Thane Higgins. I'm Emma Minhas, and I'm Elias Gus. We are Group 19. We are doing the Ford Pinto tank issue. The Pinto was designed to compete in the subcompact car market against competition coming from rival car companies Toyota and Volkswagen, both being Japanese and German respectively. It was uh, released to the public in 1971 and cost $2,000 and weighed 2,000 pounds. The president of Ford at the time, Lee Aikoka, was detrimental to the creation and production of the Ford Pinto. He prioritized style and aesthetics overall, over the overall safety. He's quoted to say, styling cars sell cars, safety does not. Lee Aikoka ordered the Pinto team to compress the production time from 43 months to 25 months. During the production period, they performed crash tests on the Pinto and they had found that from rear end collisions at low speeds of around 20 miles per hour would rupture the gas tank due to it being positioned behind the rear axle. The Pinto was already too far in production for them to redesign it. The engineers continued with the process nonetheless as they were afraid of being dismissed from their job due to Ford's nature of putting costs and profits over safety. The cost to fix the design flaw was $11 per vehicle, and with 12.5 million vehicles to fix, the total cost would be $137 million. This was almost triple to the pro projected costs of jets continuing to pay out the damages, which totaled around $49.5 million. Using the EGAT approach, we will be looking at the situation of discovering the gas tank design flaw in the Pinto from the perspective of a Ford lead engineer. If I were to discover the safety issues as a lead production engineer at Ford, the ethical dilemmas present in this situation under the Professional Engineers Act would be failure to safeguard the public's health, failure to report it, which would be conduct disgraceful or unprofessional. I have to show fairness to my employer, be a faithful agent to his confidential information, but also report any unethical conduct to proper tribunals without fear. Some of the alternate paths that I can take in this situation can be to do nothing. I can report this up the management chain, but if they do nothing, then I can whistle blow to the PEO, or I can leak confidential information directly to the media. So if I were to analyze these paths, doing nothing would violate 72-2C and not reporting the design flaw, as it's a danger to the public if someone were to get into an accident driving the Pinto. If I were to report it to management and then to the PEO, this would follow the proper procedure and a duty to report, but this could risk my own job and other employees as we might be forced to redesign the Pinto, increasing costs and push it back to schedule, something the president did not want. If I were to leak the information directly to the media, this would violate 77.3 by revealing my employer's confidential information in an unprofessional way. This can also put the engineering profession in a bad light to the public as they might perceive engineers as being sneaky by trying to implement an unsafe design. Deciding on the best path, it would be to report up the management chain and then to the PEO. This follows the correct procedures according to the Professional Engineers Act. This ensures the safety of the general public without committing professional misconduct. The legal circumstances of this case will fall under tort law. This is because Ford violated conditions of tort. They owed a duty of care, they breached a duty of care, and the plaintiff suffered damages and momentary loss. For tort law to be applicable, we have to pass the five criteria of contract law. Offer an acceptance, in the sense that Ford put the Pinto on sale for 2000 which is purchased by the customer. Mutual intent, both Ford and the customer understood the terms of purchase. Consideration, because the customer received the car and Ford received the money. Capacity, both parties were of able mind. Lawful purpose. The sale was a legal transaction between two parties. The first legal precedence for this case was the Donahue vs. Stevenson case. This is a case where a lady drank a beer with a snail in it that eventually got her sick. So then she sued the beer company for damages. This implies that the parties do not need to have a written contract to be held responsible because they owe a duty of care for the product, just as Ford owes a duty of care for their car. Next is the Moorcock case, which involved a company that allowed a boat to dock, which ended up being unsafe and damaging the boat. The company argued that they never said it was going to be safe, but it was implied that the boat, would be, the boat would be safe, which made them at fault. This relates to the Ford case because the car was implied to be safe to drive as, as it was being sold. Liability and damages. 
In this case, it was vicarious liability because the Ford Motor Company was responsible as a whole for its employees' actions based on design, engineering, etc. No single person was solely responsible. The types of damages for this case was general damages, as it was based on the pain and suffering of the parties involved in the accident, and punitive damages that are to punish the defendant and dissuade them from committing future torts. Overall, if someone was to have occurred in an accident because of the Pinto's gas tank flaw, or to be at fault, and will be liable for damages awarded to the plaintiff.